As you have probably already guessed, there are better ways to deploy your web application than the technique I just showed you, which was manually setting up the IIS application and then physically copying the files to the target directory. Um, you want to prefer to use a tool like this because it will handle all of the deployment issues for you. It will choose only the set of files necessary to deploy the application. We actually deployed everything and that was overkill, right? We didn't, we shouldn't have to bother deploying the source code files, any extra configuration files that aren't used at runtime, etc. cetera. Um, and so the model here is to uh, use this tool, web, web Deploy, that will take care of packaging up your components. It will also take care of um, modifying IIS if necessary to change uh, settings within the IIS deployment. Uh, you can specify the name of the uh, application you want to create. Uh, it also supports the installation of the SQL database that we'll take a look at later. Um, and there's a feature within IIS that lets you actually import, or you can simply deploy uh, to the local file system, or you could push it out to an ISP. Any number of options are available. So the preferred deployment model is to use the web deploy tool within Visual Studio. So let's take a look at how to use web deploy to push our application to an IIS installation. If you go to the properties of your web project, you'll notice a tab over here on the left called Package Publish Web. And uh, this is going to let you configure how the web deploy uh, utility packages up your application for deployment. Um, so a couple of options just to point out here. Which files do you want to include as part of the deployment? Typically leaving it to the defaulted only files needed to run this application is appropriate. And that will not include things like source code files, which we kind of blindly included before. Whether you want it to include the app data folder directory, or folder. Um, and this depends on whether you're actually going to be using SQL Express as we have defaulted here, or if you want to take the data from your application, from your database, and install it in a local SQL server on the target installation. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and include it, but we'll come back and revisit that when we deploy to a, an internet service provider. Um, there's also an option for including databases that are configured in the Package Publish SQL tab. We'll come back to that in a minute as well. Uh, you can ask it to propagate the settings you have defined in IIS Express. So if you've configured some settings locally that you're doing testing against and you want those propagated, it will install them in the, in the IIS um, version that you, you deploy to. And then the output for this whole process is, a, is going to be a zip file uh, that contains the package of your application, all the contents zipped up, ready to go. And you can then use an import facility within IIS to actually deploy it. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. And if we just build our application, so if you look under the object directory um, package subdirectory, this is where it's expanding all the files in preparation for deployment and uh, will have generated a zip file for you to import if you want to. However, the easiest way to use this MS Deploy feature is to use this um, Publish tab up here. And what the Publish toolbar lets you do is configure one or more deployment scenarios. So it's really useful to um, configure MS Deploy the way you need to configure it, and then set up one or more deployment targets so that you can test on those targets. And this might be where you configure to a local machine for testing, and then maybe you have another um, option here to, to deploy to a live server once you've gone through your tests. So if you take a look at the um, editing, the properties on this uh, local um, publication, and I, I just set this up as a local um, deploy so I could try out the deployment model on my machine here. Uh, you specify the publish method, which can either be web deploy, FTP file system, or front page server extensions. Uh, generally, you want to prefer web deploy where possible, unless the target doesn't support it. Uh, we're going to map onto localhost, and we're going to specify what uh, application we want to be set up in IIS. Now, what I've done is gone through and actually removed the application we created by hand earlier from IIS, and I've gotten rid of the directory that was there. So we're starting from scratch again, and we're going to use this new 
uh, or this web deploy feature to do that. So we, we request the settings to, uh, to deploy this as an IIS application and um, not to delete all the files when we push it there. So let's go ahead and try publishing the site and see what happens. First thing you'll notice is that you do need to be running under administrative mode to perform this deployment because we are pushing to IIS. So let me go ahead and close this and reopen Visual Studio with administrator privileges which you can do with a shortcut if you do a sh uh, control shift click on the application bar that will launch with admin privileges. And let's go ahead and open up our application again and try using our deploy, which was local. We're going to go to local deploy and let's publish. Okay, and you can see this is going through the process of uh, generating the installation package and then actually executing it. Again, this is something that's very easy to do from the command line or by hand if you want to. Uh, there's a command file that is generated for you as part of this uh, process. Um, but within Visual Studio, this single click publish is, is very convenient for testing as well. So let's go ahead and see what happened over here in IIS. Let's do a refresh. And notice it created a test application for us. And if we look at the properties of that, notice it dropped it into inetpub www root test app. That was the same location that I had tried it out earlier. And um, all of the content should be there. Now let's just go look at the directory structure because I want to point out a couple of things that were different from how we did it before. If you recall before, I manually created that application and then we just copy the entire directory over. You'll notice here, web deploy was much more selective in what it copied over. So there are no source code files here. There's just the root web.config file. Um, the bin directory contains our compiled assemblies. The app data directory contains our database that we requested that it deploy. And everything else is just um, the bare essentials, right? Only what is strictly necessary to deploy your application. And if we had to do that by hand, we'd have to very carefully uh, select only the files necessary. So let's go ahead and try browsing to the site. All right, so the, the application is deployed. Let's try logging in as Bob again. Verify that the database was installed properly as well in that local directory. And all looks good. Okay, so that is um, definitely the preferred deployment model, even if you're doing local testing. That, that um, gives you a nice reproducible deployment process, which you can then customize depending on the target that you're uh, shooting for. I'd like to uh, finish by showing you how to deploy your application complete with its database to an internet service provider. Just to give you the complete picture in a very common scenario for uh, application development within Visual Web Developer Express. So there are two things that we need to take care of, uh, make sure we have support for before we try publishing to a service provider. One is the database that I was using was the default SQL Express database. And that works fine when I had control on the of the machine and we were just pushing a physical file to the uh, directory structure and I knew that SQL Express was installed. However, if you're deploying to a machine that has a different configuration, uh, like most internet service providers will have their own SQL database installation that you'll have to integ integrate into, uh, we'll need to figure out how to get our database schema and perhaps data into the target database. So the good news is the web deploy um, packaging facility has a published SQL capability as well. Uh, and you can specify where it should pull the data from, typically your local database, whether it should pull the schema of the database only or the database schema and the data. And then you specify the target uh, connection string. How should it actually uh, take the data and, and publish it to the target server? So we're going to take a look at doing that. And then the one other piece we need to take care of is the configuration file. If we're deploying to a new server, that new server uh, is going to have the different database location, and we're going to have to change our database connection string within the configuration file to match it. And there may be other things you want to change in your configuration file as well. So um, the good news is, is there's a generic 
configuration file deployment uh, feature that lets you customize web.config during deployment. And I'm going to walk you through this. There's a very sophisticated uh, syntax called XDT, X, XML Data Transform, that um, lets you generate many different configurations of the file depending on your target scenario. Um, I'm just going to show you a couple of simple ones that are the most common, but if you want to dig into this further, uh, there are many more features you can try out. So let's go try configuring our database for deployment and our web configuration file to match the target server.